ever find yourself in an organization or on a team that's struggling because of a leader's poor decision? You sit back and you reflect on the leader personally. You wonder why a savvy, experienced, and ordinarily capable person could make such a dumb decision. One that wrecks a project or destroys the morale of so many people. The leader himself or herself may actually be scratching their head wondering the same thing. Where did I go wrong? Where did I miss the signs that this decision would sink the ship so fast? Analyze such situations from the typical week's project in your organization to the huge scandals in the news and you'll find these common causes. The been there done that syndrome, the self-interest above the common good cause, and the third one just plain old power. Let's talk about the first one, been there done that syndrome. When faced with new situations, leaders sometimes inadvertently shortcut their normally decision-making skills by shoving the issue into the same category as previous problems. But they have faulty memories. The situation isn't the same. Eastman Kodak comes to mind here. When faced with photography moving to the digital world, their leadership team at Kodak refused to believe it really was a new situation, new technology, that the industry really would change so dramatically. They thought they'd licked the competition in the past, and so this was just another similar time. Some leaders continue to think every new challenge is simply a new version of an old challenge that they've overcome. Result? The problem swallows them, and sometimes the entire organization, before they realize it. I recently discussed a pervasive problem with a senior leader and suggested that he survey representatives of the various departments to get feedback on the situation, a decision he had made that, frankly, was being widely ignored or circumvented throughout the organization. His response? Look, I already know what they say. Anyway, you only get negative feedback on a survey. Well, currently, he's done nothing to right the ship, and the organization has largely ignored his directive. The ship is taking on water fast, and he is just climbing to a higher deck and pretending not to notice. The second cause, self-interest above the common good. Some savvy leaders look out for the team, department, or the organization, up to a point. But when the common good clashes with what's best for them personally, the tide turns. Of course, to a degree, everyone has self-interest in mind. Otherwise, they'd never ask the salary when they accept a new job, they'd underprice their services or their products as a seller, and then never expect a raise or promotion. At question here is inappropriate self-interest. Lying, withholding information that sabotages a project, blaming others, refusing to own up to your own mistakes, or taking credit for other people's work or ideas. And then, of course, the third cause, power. A leadership position, however gained, grants power, and power feeds ego. Leaders begin to believe their own press, that they are actually the smartest person in the room every time. Many leaders surround themselves with people who continually reinforce that concept. Their information comes to them filtered through sycophants. Before long, their leaders lose touch with reality. So obviously, the decisions they make may or may not reflect the reality of a situation. A few years ago, a general manager, let's call him Tim, bragged about his running an organization and then a, he was talking of his resignation from a particular organization. Although I'm leaving for a better opportunity, in some way I feel bad about leaving because so many people are upset about my resignation. I, I feel sorry for them because I'm leaving. Reality check? Nobody resigned. The CEO reports that the company continued to grow without this general manager who thought he was so important. Perceptions become distorted when leaders hear from only one particular group, those who particularly are their supporters. How do leaders course correct after a poor decision? 
Well, one, they accept responsibility for their faulty decisions. They own up. Nothing starts you on the road to recovering trust like admitting a lapse in judgment. It's the failure to do so that infuriates others and compels them to keep pointing out that poor decision and the consequences. Confession is not only good for the soul, but for clearing the record and refilling the trust account. And two, hear from the troops regularly. To stay grounded, you need information from all sources. You have to ask difficult questions, questions that may generate troubling answers. You have to deal with perceptions. You have to understand the impact of your actions, your words, and even your silences. Those have an impact on other people. Information enlightens. And third, find a confidant. Find someone who does not report to you or depend on you for a paycheck. This person can help you stay grounded to take on the tough challenges of leadership. Smart decisions come from smart leaders committed to communicate with those up, down, and laterally to help you stay grounded in reality.